What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Mindcation. We are here on August 2nd. You know, it's finally August now. Um, what is this? Month five of quarantine, of uh, living with the coronavirus. As you can see, we are a three man crew today. Um, Isaac decided not to join us this week. You know, he thought he had uh, more important things to do than um, kind of come and, and have this conversation with us. Um, not really. He uh, he had some car issues. His car died on the side of the road. Uh, he's getting that figured out with his dad, allegedly. And we, were, we were supposed to be on the way to pick him up right now, and we decided not to. So yeah, no. <laughs> the podcast is more important. We texted him, let him know that the podcast is. We got to get it out to the the consumers. Hey, Can't yeah. the show must go on? You know the, exactly. Hey, we should have. Uh, that's where we messed up. I can text Reed right now and see if he wants to fill in for Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna text him. hey, text him. If he wants to get on, he can get on. Um, I don't, well, hey, we'll do a little. Uh, we'll do a little mid podcast phone call. All right, fair enough. <laughs> and if we have to, we can just chop this. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. We don't even get to co- congratulate him on here about uh, – he did pass his uh, personal training exam. Yep. Um, even That's though cool. a week out, you know, he realized that he should have been studying a lot more. But <laughs> – Yeah. He came through. He came through at the end and, and got it done. He got he got it by like three points, I believe. Three percent, like yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, well, Reed's too cool to answer his phone, so we'll see if he uh, calls back. All right, fair enough. We'll see. Um, he would have been a perfect guest too for what we're talking about. The topic for the topic we're going into today. Yep, we're delving into. I wanted to ask Isaac if it, he um, did he ditch on his whole going to work out at five a.m. or has he been there since five a.m. and just now leaving the gym? Because he likes to say that he only yeah. does work out at that time, but it's twelve thirty. And he texted us, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, at 12.30, that his car broke. I wonder what street it broke down on, too. We're finding, we're finding some holes in the story. Yeah, right? <laughs> yep. He posted a workout video this morning, though. At 5 a.m. I mean, powerlifters, they do lift for four Long hours. Time. <laughs> so maybe that's what I'm happened. Not trying to start, I'm not trying to start any <laughs> hate, but <laughs> just saying. Hey. Four hours in the gym. It's oh, a lot. A good old friend, Abby Leshinsky, started a to watch these a lot more now and uh yeah she'll come after you <laughs> oh i know i know i know i'm not saying it's a bad thing i'm just saying it's a lot of time in the gym well yeah she she messaged me that she was watching the podcast and she wished she could join in on the discussion and i said come on the podcast sometime and she said okay that's all she said <laughs> <laughs> you expect more from her <laughs> no she, she, is, she is one of few words and, exactly when she does speak, you tend to listen because she's either oh, yeah. or saying something wise. Very, very accurate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about, um, you know, the football season as there's been a lot of news coming forward, specifically, you know, the college football season. And we were talking about that before we started recording. So, um, you know, we can hit on that now while it's still fresh in our minds. So, you know, most conferences came out and said they're going to just do uh, in-conference schedule, you know, 10, 10 games set for the ACC that's going to have nine conference game, one out-of-conference game since Notre Dame's in there now for football. And then, what was it, yesterday, or at least the last few days, there's been different player groups, one from the Pac-12 and one from the SEC that's come out that, they, that they'll just sit out, right? Like, they're they're just not – they're not willing to, no. to play mm-hmm. if – better safety measures are in place and then yeah as also with the the racial uh talks that have been going on you know the COVID stuff and then other stuff that they mentioned on there as well um you know that's the first time I feel like I've seen that at least in a long time maybe ever of players standing up like that and saying like nah we're not gonna play if like this because the people that came out with those reports for the the commissioners or whatever said like Positive tests, tests are going to happen. Those are something we're going to have to deal with. Um, you know, basically, like, it's going to happen, so we just got to learn how to move on with it and keep going. And players were like, no, nah, that's, like, not good enough for us, I guess. Mm-hmm. 
Which fair. I mean, it's their health or whatever. You know, we've had some some players already sit out. The only big major one was a corner out of Virginia, either Virginia or Virginia Tech. Virginia don't remember. Tech. Yeah, Virginia Tech. Don't remember his name, but he's a projected first rounder, and he's like, I'm just gonna sit out, train for the draft next year. Yeah. So there's a lot to talk about there. So how do you guys initially feel about that whole situation? I mean, I was kind of talking about it early. I just. I just don't see how, like, even if they do have a season, once, you know, a player or a few players on a team gets it and let's say they're on, like, a road trip, you know, how do you how do you know, one, that they didn't spread it and that they um, honestly, like, knew that they had it right then and there? So that affects the whole team. And then on top of that, with that whole team, if that whole team gets it, then they have to sit out, you know, 14 days what happens to that next week game? Like, how do we, is that game just going to be canceled? Like, how is that going to play in with the schedule? And I just think there's just too many risks. And also just, I mean, football is one of those sports that you have a ton of players playing and like the NBA is doing a great job at, you know, with the COVID things and stuff like that. But I mean, even like professional players, even the NBA, like professional players, there's the the Clippers team who left the bubble, a couple of the players left you know, these college players, are they going to fully, you know, follow the rules? All it takes is like one or two players to not follow them and then go back and practice with the team and then get everyone else sick. I just see too many risks than gain. I mean, I know that's a lot of money, but I mean, still, you got to look at like the players and also the coaches health and safety too. So that's kind of how I see it. So I don't see that I don't think it's smart to have a season unless like massive safety precautions are put in place. So, yeah, I just, I kind of have two, two different thoughts on it. First is just economically. And I know, you know, you talk safe, you know, safety versus the money of it, but like mm-hmm. for a local economy, like Lincoln, mm-hmm. like, without, like it's going to, it's going to cripple. Oh yeah. Not even the university economy, but also, the the local economy like I saw I heard something on one of the, like the radio shows um, for UNL like fifty percent of non sports scholarship money that is you the university uses is given by the athletic department right so it's further reaching than just sports um, you know there's that and then you know these players are doing this like it's their passion. You know, if you play college sports or have been around college sports, like it's a full-time job, you know, they, they you know, these guys are doing it cause they want to try and take it to the next level. And although most of them won't make it there, you know, just the opportunity, just to, to not have that opportunity is going to be crushing, crushing for a lot of them. And then on the other hand, just in terms of coronavirus in general, um, you know, we're in the midst of seeing, a bunch of, you know, spikes in cases and stuff like that, um, you know, but it's kind of, you know, it's come to light that, you know, um, obviously you don't want anyone to die from anything, but the mortality rate, you know, with this virus is like 0.3% or something like that, mm-hmm. depending on um, demographics. And so, uh, you know, I was just, I was listening to um, a podcast with Dr. Drew and before you go and, you know, say, oh, it's Dr. Drew, he's a celebrity, celebrity doctor. He's actually, he actually has, you know, he's a practicing physician, has his own practice. Um, and he was saying, you know, at some point you have to get back to normal life. And it's like, you know, even with the mentality of, you know, one death is too many. It's like, well, you know, how many people die from the flu every year? How many people die from this? Like, um, you know, it's turned out that most people are getting this and most people are recovering from it. And uh, so, you know, people have more severe symptoms than others. Um, and so it just kind of comes down to the fact of, of, you know, how much longer are we going to, like, I don't know. It's, it's a hard line to walk, but how much longer are we going to allow it to totally control our society versus just um, starting to build up, you know, we're starting to build up some herd immunity, type, you know, that type of stuff. Right. And, uh, mm-hmm. And obviously, it's all through all through the media, but it seems as though we're getting closer and closer to a vaccine with it. You know, we're just starting to do human trials, which you know we're still months away from a vaccine. But just at some point, um, you know, we're gonna have to 
we're not going to be able to live as a society like this, you know, forever. So at some point we're going to have to take that next step. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, that becomes difficult just trying to balance that whole thing. To me, I, I, I don't think, I don't think a season will finish. I think it'll start. I don't think it'll finish. I think, and the reason why I always thought that the college sports were going to be more screwed than the professional sports was because they're so they like the even athletics has to um, conform to like the university policies, right? So, uh, and a lot of the university policies that are made are revolved around what the students need, you know, or what the student safety. And they could care less about like the the sports aspect of it, right? Like, obviously that's a big component, but I feel like a lot of them are they will lean towards being more making more conservative decisions, right? To just like shut things down or do things that way, just because there's more at stake than just a season for them. You know, like they don't want any lawsuits, things like that. And when one school goes down, then then for the most part, maybe other schools will, will kind of follow. Um, but it, it is difficult. You know, I don't, I don't know exactly what will happen, you know, especially with players standing up and saying like, Hey, like well, there's not enough safety measures or there's not even enough things being talked about um, as far as racial relations go, right. That there's still a lot of tension and stuff going on due to that. And I know the NC, NCAA came out and allowed, players to uh have like it's kind of like what the nba is doing you know like you could have labels or whatever um Mm -hmm. to support whatever movement you want things like that um so which was surprising of the ncaa since they tend to not do a, a lot of things but um i also saw that the power fives are saying if the ncaa suspends um their championships right? Like, or delays them or whatever, or just don't have them, they will try to see if they can somehow make their own or like still have their own, which that would be very interesting as well. Cause I'm sure that would be a battle with the NCAA. Um, it really would be, it really would be. That would, I Here, I'll, I'll be right back. Boys. I'm going to switch my setup here real quick, but continue talking. I'll be right back. Sounds good. We'll keep it going. Yeah, so I don't know how that how that's all gonna all gonna work out. Um, I just think there's so many in professional sports. It everything revolves around sports, right? Like those guys, mm-hmm. that's their job. That's what they get paid to do. And you know, like the NBA and the NHL have done a great job with these, you know, bubble cities, and you know, being able to contain the people that are in there. And UFC. And UFC as well. Um, they did. They and soccer. Soccer's done. A yeah. Pretty- but I mean, all these bubble areas have been doing really good. But then you see yeah. the MLB that had, um, you know, they're still doing the whole traveling thing. And then, you know, you get the Marlins organization that had up to what I think 19 total mm-hmm. positive tests from both players and um, coaches and things like that. And so they had to suspend the games that they had, you know, the, the rest of the league still going, but now they had to try to somehow figure out how to get those extra games that they missed somewhere else in the season. Um, which I think for football, that's a lot harder to do, um, especially at the, at the college level. So I have no idea how how exactly right. that will all end up going. I mean, that's the one thing that does keep, like, the sporting world kind of more on the optimistic side because, you know, there have been certain sports like, you know, NBA, MLB, UFC, soccer that have shown like, hey, yeah, we can play this during the pandemic. Now, granted, all those are very professional level sports and that's all they have. So like there's another aspect you have to look at the college level is those college athletes are also students. And so being able to have them go on road trips and then come back. And let's say if we're not all online and we're doing that, you know, 50, 50 thing where you have to be in the classroom, that's also another aspect that you have to pay attention to. Cause then you're also, I mean, going on those trips and stuff like that, you're putting the other 
population at risk too of just the general students and things like that. So it'll be interesting. I mean, I'm interested to see what comes out. Um, the biggest thing for me is like, you know, I look for the safety of both the athlete, the coach, and then just the other teams too, because I mean, like we've talked about, this does kill people and things like that. So, um, but yeah, we do definitely need to get back to normal life. It's just depends on how you go about it and what things will be permanently changed forever. And then what things will hopefully go back to normal sometime soon. Well, and you know, when people talk about going back to school as being an issue, um, and I I don't think it's the actual classes and like on campus activities, that'll be the issue. Um, cause obviously, you know, if, if they do, you know, however many on, on class, on campus classes that, you know, they have masks are going to be required for everybody. Yep. Um, you know, and, and it's pretty much finding out that, you know, if person A and person B both wear masks, the trans, you know, transmit the ability for transmission is pretty much zero. Um, so it comes down to like what those students are doing off the campus, obviously. Um, but even then, you know, like for Nebraska, these players have been back since June. Um, so, you know, they've had that, you know, they've, they've had that opportunity to go out and do whatever they want to outside of that. Um, so I don't know. I think it's just kind of balancing the risk, uh, you know, the risk reward factor. Um, you know, I, I don't think Nebraska, Nebraska's not, um, you know, they released their initial number for like positive cases, but they haven't updated it since. So you don't know whether someone's contracted it since the start and all that. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know how much of a factor um, on campus classes will necessarily play with the precautions that will be taken. I, I mean, obviously it will play a factor, but um, yeah, I don't know. I choose to be an optimist that there's going to be a season and they're, they're going to play most of it. But. Oh, yeah. Look, I hope so. Cause I love the college football season, yeah. right? Like I love, I love watching it. I, and, you know, everybody else has somehow figured it out, right? As far as, like, the professional sports goes, they've been able to figure something out. So I hope the college ranks uh, are able to um, figure something out as well. But I just think when you add that whole education piece to it, it makes it just a little bit trickier because there's just a lot more people involved making decisions that are not necessarily sports people, I guess. Because there's a lot more loops, like, the college system has to jump through, too. Because, like, because how I look at it, I mean, if, like, a player goes out on a road trip and contracts a virus there, um, technically, because that is a university road trip, they are liable for that player. And so that player could get pissed and then sue the university. Not saying that will ever happen. But, like, just things like that, that the university will be liable for a lot. But, yeah, no, I'm also on the same boat as, like, I hope there's a college season because it's, I mean, super fun to watch. And like Noah said, it brings in a good amount of just revenue for just the general city. I mean, that's how Lincoln kind of runs. That's all we have, really, in right. Nebraska is the Huskers. I mean, you have people coming around all over Nebraska just to watch the Huskers. And so that, for local businesses – and just like downtown Lincoln, that's just an, an amazing revenue boost that if we don't have that, it's, it could hurt and put, you know, already, you know, with businesses already kind of crippling and things like that and cleans places are closing and people are losing jobs. Um, that would even be a bigger blow too, if we didn't have college sports. And um, I'll go ahead. No, I'm, well, yeah, just, I mean, just for another example, like when I was with the basketball team one year, we played in the NIT, and I went to Starkville, Mississippi, when we played Mississippi State, and that's just like a middle-of-nowhere town. It's just a small town that's based around the university. So, I mean, even like a bigger – like there are just even smaller cases than Lincoln. You know, like um, I just don't don't see how economically they're going to be able to not have a season. Right. So, yeah, it's just that – that balance of public safety versus economics, which, which you can argue the humanity of, but you can't argue how, I mean, how, I mean, mm -mm. the economy runs everything, you know what I mean? You know, yep. can't worry about, you can't worry about humanity too much if you don't have any money to help anybody. So. 
It'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, I know, like, um, going down one more level and going to the high school level, right? So Nebraska is a state that said all, for, all fall sports activities are a go, like, uh, on their normal schedule. And I just uh, – right now as I was uh, scrolling through Twitter, saw – an article that the Omaha World Herald put out about um, OPS is still in consideration of just canceling their fall sports. Um, like all the Omaha public schools would cancel fall sports. And I'm just talking about the, the uh, potential for lawsuits against OPS from parents if they do decide to, mm-hmm. to cancel the, the fall sports season. Um, and it seemed that they're more likely to get sued from canceling it than um, than kids getting it f- because they they left them to still happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's interesting as well because, um, you know, high school sports. It, I I think you know you can kind of relate that a little more to college and can than the pros or whatever. But um, as far as in Nebraska, you know, it seemed like. You know, things are going to get go on just as cat as normal. But it'd be pretty crazy if, the like, the entire city, well, the OPS system just said, like, no, nah, we're not having this uh, as far as Class A goes, right? Because they're all – I think all OPS schools are in Class A. I could be wrong, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know what all the OPS schools consist of. Mm-hmm. Um, Like, is, is gross Class A? Like Omaha Gross, like there are private schools, obviously. So like Omaha yeah. Gross, Gross is not Class A, but I don't think they fall under the OPS ruling. Oh yeah, yeah. public schools. So. Yeah, I think all the public my, ones are yeah. Class A. So that would take out, you know, a good seven or eight schools out of the twenty, whatever. I think there's twenty six mm-hmm. in Class A, maybe twenty four. Um, well, and you're taking out some big schools too. Yeah, you that take normally. Take Omaha North, Omaha Central, Northwest. Um, Papio else, schools. Pa- I yeah. don't know if they count yeah. in that. I don't think uh, that's uh, that's like Papio school system. Papio. And like the Miller school system are their own things, not OPS. So what about like um, – You take away what? Burke. You take away um, – like, their own thing. What's up? What about, what about like uh, the La Vista schools? Yeah, that's all – they're all their own school system. Like the Papio mm-hmm. – Papio South are both their own. I'm pretty sure, anyways. Same with Bellevue, same with Millard. They're all their own. So I don't think they would fall under that category. But it would be all your inner cities, in mm-hmm. inner city schools, your north, central, south, northwest, and Burke, I believe, are the five that would. Well, and it, I'll be interested to see at some point, in my opinion, that there needs to be – we need to get rid of the enti- – like the – the overarching decisions and bring, make it down to each school or no, what? no, the look, you know, the risks, mm-hmm. like, like we're going to have a season and everyone in is going to play. You're going to sign a liability waiver and you know, the risks, if you get sick, if you die, like you're accepting those, accepting those consequences. Yeah. So like, like even down to the NBA and the NFL, you know, guys are getting opt out clauses and stuff like that. Too. So like, like, end of the day those guys are like they're like you guys know the risks if you want to play you can play and if you don't want to you don't have to um and it just seems like you know i understand um being you know wary of this and be and wanting to be safe about it but at some point i think you just kind of have to have to give over control and being and be like if you guys want to play let's play but if you don't you know mm-hmm. and i think that was the nsa's whole viewpoint right that's why they said they just have it as normal and then you know it's not like sports are mandatory right it's still up to the parents and and the students like if you don't want to play it you don't feel comfortable like that's perfectly fine you know you don't have to but the season will still kind of happen so it'll be interesting to see what they uh what they do though because if 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 the school system like an ops decides to like no we're not having our students take in take part in fall athletics what does that mean for everybody else right yeah like do people start following suit or Mm -hmm. 
you'll have a few schools that'll probably also drop and then you'll have some that'll still try to go but then like with scheduling and stuff like that again like you got to look back at that yeah and i just think if it comes down to that like just small town schools there i just don't think there's any way that they cancel there's just you know it's just like mm-hmm. that's like kind of the lifeblood of the town i don't really i don't really see a way in where they don't at least try to play yeah, i'm trying to read this uh as fast as I can to see what else they're going to say about it. But, uh, um, high quality podcasting. Yeah, exactly. We love our, our dead silence. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's not activity start on August 10th. I would assume that that's when, um, they'll kind of probably have a better decision or a better understanding of what OPS will do in general. Um, but I don't know. I guess that's all up in the air. I hadn't, I guess I hadn't heard that that was something that was going on. Um, yeah, me either. I had seen that the NSA had said that it was a go and I figured that was just going to be the case. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess it was just yesterday when it was kind of announced that, uh, that it was something of a possibility, maybe. I don't know. Just these articles are basically from today or, or yesterday, so I assume it just happened a few days ago that OPS was considering this. So it's quite, well, then, quite weird. What's up? Yeah. And then even, like, transitioning into, like, school life, and since we're kind of co- talking about colleges, what – now, I know no, you don't have to really worry about this as much – but what are your guys' opinions on doing that, like, split 50% goes on Monday, Tuesday, and then the other 50% goes on Thursday, Friday, and then Wednesdays, like, every other week that the student goes in? At the high school at level? L- yeah, LPS. And then, like, the university, some of our classes are like that, too. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I hadn't heard about that. Yep. I just think it gives – more work for the professor because they essentially then have to have an in-class format on top of an online format. And so that's just a lot to handle all at once. I, I mean, I see it either you go all online or else you have your class. And I know like a lot of classes that are <clears throat> under like 20 people are allowed to have it, but then those big lecture halls, they, highly recommend you do like a zoom call or something like that or pre-recorded lectures and then have office hours well i just think it's good you can go you're gonna do that i feel like then you should if you're gonna do two days a week in person then you might as well just make that that lecture so like usually like in college like the way unl works you either have a monday wednesday friday class or a tuesday thursday class right Yep. So if you're going to do that, then you might as well make those lectures both of those days. So like if you're in a class with me Tuesday, Thursday, just meet Monday, Tuesday, be done for the week mm-hmm. outside of your homework type stuff. Um, I don't see any point in going to a class just once a week and then trying to do online for the rest of it. Right. I mean, outside of like, you know, there's seminars and lab and stuff like that, which is different. But um, if they're going to make it so intricate, like that, then they might as well just try and knock it out. Well, you know, mm-hmm. make those make those Monday Tuesday days a little bit more intensive. I mean, that means you're going to class two out of six, two out of seven days a week, right? So, yep. so just make them go to both classes Monday Tuesday, get it out of the way, and then I would just avoid trying, like you said, avoid trying to do that dual format. Right. Yep. I just think there's it leaves a lot more confusion for the student and the professor, because I don't know, I just think it'll be weird. I mean, not, and granted, I haven't done it yet. So it'll be interesting to see how like the professor like implements it. But yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be an e- easier transition for us to kind of if we have to do that right to not mm-hmm. to as far as college students go, I imagine at the high school level or like a or a grade school level, it'd be a lot more difficult to do that in general mm-hmm. um to get kids to kind of buy in on that or even be able to learn properly that way 
but I guess kind of speaking on, on our own, um, kind of what we have to do. Um, I feel like a lot of classes are just kind of, a lot of teachers or well, professor are just going to be like, nah, we'll just go full online because they'd rather just yeah. do that than deal with having to have half the class there on one day and the other half the other day. Um, Cause then I'm, I'm assuming it'll still be like optional to go to class for the most part, you know, I don't know how many, right. I don't know how many classes nowadays will have you have required attendance especially with all this stuff so really i only see labs like yeah where like you have to do in class activity really mhm other than that you really can't require people because like what if someone thinks they have it and then they get tested and then they have to quarantine like are mm-hmm. you going to take points away for them quarantining and trying to be you know what i mean like mhm yeah, it would be interesting to kind of just see that balance of um, – I, I I personally don't think you and I will stay in-person stuff past September. I don't think we make it out of September. Yeah. Um, maybe slightly into October. I, I've heard from a lot of – well, sources, I guess. Um, sources. <laughs> just some of the – Can't name names. <laughs> <laughs> some stuff I've been a part of that um, I think that's kind of what they're – it seems like, especially with Lincoln being and Nebraska in general being a, a state that's kind of hot behind the curve, and um, we'll see its its actual spike coming up soon. They they mm-hmm. don't they don't think we'll make the full semester as normal. Yeah, it just I, can, yeah, I don't know. There's so many question marks. Because mm-hmm. you never know where this thing's really going or where does it stop or mm-hmm. do we just do like a herd immunity thing where just everyone gets it and then just go about that. Yeah, everybody um, calls each other. See, yeah, everybody gets yeah. it. And then everybody quarantine for two weeks and call again. Yeah. But I mean, cause now there's reports that are saying like, there's new st- that even though if you get it, you can still get it again. And another interesting thing that you have to look at is with like, flu season up and coming how do you you know diagnose between the flu and coronavirus like that's just going to be awkward if you're sitting in a lecture hall and you're coughing because of allergies like even when this yeah. first started that was awful those first that first month was awful because it was like allergy season mm-hmm. pollen was coming out and you were coughing and people were giving you the dirtiest stares because mm-hmm. they thought you had something and it's just it'll be interesting but i mean everyone has different symptoms as well but yeah i've seen that as a meme or just like on twitter be like when people are like can am i still allowed to cough for like normal reasons Mm -hmm. other than like covid (laughs) because you know like especially if you sneeze or cough in public you know everybody just thinks like how dare you it's like well yeah that's still a human reaction for (laughs) a lot of different things not just having covid so it uh it'll definitely be interesting Yes, it will. Well. Well. (laughs) We're not having Isaac here to... uh... No, we don't have like 20 minutes just to roast on him and then... Yeah, then it it fills out the hour, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Oh. I wonder if he got his car figured out because he still hasn't texted us back. Yeah, I know. He told us he was going to keep us updated, and he hasn't. I, I doubt that he does. No. Forget about us. <sighs> I know, like, um, as far as the rec goes, they plan to uh, kind of keep that whole reservation thing going th- even during the semester, mm-hmm. which will make things even more interesting. And I know a lot of people are like, well, I'll just get another membership in other places because I don't want to deal with that. Um which I guess for the rec that doesn't really matter because you still pay it in your student fee. So it's like, whether you use it or not, that doesn't matter to us. But I wonder if you'll start having people be like, nah, I don't want to pay that part of my student fees. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use it. Well, because they're going to be like, well, because like I look at it as like, if you are doing that reservation thing and it's only like 50 minutes, granted that leaves a lot of spots, but 
there's no possible way they can have a reservation for every single student that pays that. You know what I mean? Like you look at our student population and then look at the full day of the rec and I'm including East campus as well. Mm -hmm. Like, is that statistically possible to be able to get every single student? Cause then the students can come back and say that where it's not my fault that, you know, I have class during these times. The only time I'd be able to work out is this and that reservations always full. Mm -hmm. And so like, I could definitely see students complaining about that and just being like, no, I don't want to pay that fee because but you also you also look at it too is, is how much of your student bill goes towards helping departments that you don't that you're not a part of right um, i think true. most people don't know the breakdown of what their student fees no. go right you know that right. and so i just don't i mean you can complain about it all you want i think the university is going to be like sorry like yeah. that's what it costs to get in here that's where the money yeah. goes like, well you're able to you're able to say, I don't want to pay for this or don't want to pay for that because let's just say you think you don't, you're not going to use it or whatever. So you don't have to, like you can opt out of things, right? Like right. the rec is something you can opt out of. Um, I probably shouldn't say that as a rec person, but, uh, <laughs> but you are able to, but then like, let's say you wanted to use a rec, your card would be denied and you'd have to either right. pay the student fees or buy your own membership, which would be kind of dumb. But uh, so I think if I'm doing my math right, um, within the rec is open for about 18 hours of the day, right? We're only closed for about six and 44 spots per hour gives you about 792 spots throughout the day at yeah. city. Um, and it's eight, a 22 spots at uh, East, right? I think this is the max at the bar yeah. uh, in the weight room yeah. area. I think so. Yeah, Someone because, said. There's yeah, there's, yeah, 18. So it's roughly like it's like 12 to twelve to 1,300 spots total between the facilities from when, they're, uh, when, from when they open to when they close, right? I don't think – what's up? No, I was just going to say I don't think that's enough spots for the amount of people that check into the rec in general. Oh, no. But granted, like not all those spots – like people can still use other parts of the facility without right. having to use the weight room. But with courts not gonna not being allowed to be used, right? Like you can't put basketball is not a volleyball. All those things are not things mm -hmm. that you can do inside the rec. Um, then people will more likely just only right. go for the weight room. So I don't know. That why aren't the courts allowed to be? I was always wondering about that. I was just interested. Like why wouldn't you be able to play basketball? Is it because of the close contact or? and yeah, and like having to. We couldn't okay. keep that place cleaned the way it would need to be. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. I assume that anyways. Sense. Again, that I feel like to me that should just come down to a matter of personal choice. You know, I've, obviously, if you come into the rack and you're going to play, then there needs you need to sign you know sign a liability waiver. Um, it just at some point I feel like we just, you know you can't control every aspect of mm -hmm. every. Uh, mm -hmm. You can try as hard as you want, but you can't control every aspect like that. So at some point, if we're gonna get back towards normal, normalcy well, at some point. I think the issue with that, you know, it's like, yeah, those people that are playing basketball themselves get sign a waiver and call it good, but then they go to other areas in the rec, right? Let's say they use the locker room or they use the lockers, right? And then other people mm -hmm. get it that way, and it's like, well, I didn't sign a liability thing because I wasn't gonna play basketball or whatever, right? And it's like that becomes a right, little bit right. harder to, to manage that way. Yep. Yep. It's a whole just mess of just trying to figure out, you know, you talk to anyone in any age range. Um, they're just like, I've never seen anything quite like this that cripples the whole entire world quite like this, which is super interesting to hear. So it'll be really interesting to see where it goes. Um, you know, when we started talking about this just like five months ago, when it first started, we were just new to it. Like we couldn't imagine the changes it would be. Um, I mean, it shut down our economy. It took a lot of us out of jobs. Um, and we're still trying to figure out just a plan to get society back up on its feet, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, debt-wise, I don't think we ever will. 
at this point. Um, but it'll be interesting. Well, I was going to think back to our last uh, in-person uh, podcast that we did on campus, you know, um, before everything went down when we first were talking about this, was like we couldn't believe how much things were shutting down. And I'll still just remember the girl that was passing by with the giving out free donuts. donuts. <laughs> and then we're like, yo, we're like in a pandemic. How are you going to be giving out donuts like that? Right. Well, I just remember yeah. when, when this whole Wuhan coronavirus thing kind of started. And I was 100% in the camp of, I think it's overblown. I don't think anything's right. going to come of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. Oh, yeah, man. Exactly. Because, I mean, it all started, what, November yeah. or so? That's when the things were starting to really take off in China. I believe so. Uh, was it November? I feel like it was closer. It was closer to, like, January, wasn't it? I thought they were starting to trace things back in November, and then it was pretty contained, and then it wasn't until, like, January or so that it started spreading outside of China. Hmm. Crazy. And now we're here. <laughs> no, uh, no, no end in sight. <laughs> so the first reported Corona-19 virus was on December 31st in Wuhan, China. Oh. According, oh, the way to bring in the new year. <laughs> according to the CDC. So. That's interesting. Yeah. Bro, that was the first reported. We were literally playing Plague Inc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were. <laughs> <laughs> On the podcast. In that, honor of uh, of seeing this take off. Bro, the virus that I created is now real. It's <laughs> taking over the world. <laughs> but it's not deadly enough, you know? You wouldn't, you wouldn't win the game. Wouldn't win the game. Nope. I infect a lot of people. But wouldn't win the game. Mm-hmm. You're like right in the midst where you're trying to uh, upgrade the vi- the virus, you know, because they're they're working on the cure and trying to pop pop those blue bubbles. But you're not being you're not making the DNA or, points. Or, or the creator of this virus is just using that strategy where you keep it super low key and you don't you don't evolve any of the symptoms. And then you at the end you're just evolving everything yeah, really quick. True. I guess, um, last thing, um, did you guys check out that, that Joe Rogan podcast with, um, the Bob Lazar documentary guy and then the other dude? I have, I have not yet. I have, um, I've not listened to a ton of Rogan lately just cause it, like, I've been working a bunch too. So I, you know, I don't really have three hours to chunk out of my day, but that one is still on my queue to listen to. I kind of started listening to the one with Post Malone. Dude, that one's trash, bro. Bro, and then I realized that I was like, I was like, I don't have the amount of, I don't have any drugs that would get me to the point to be able to comprehend. They are on so many shrooms in that episode. Dude, right? it, was just, it was just haywire. You, you just yeah. couldn't, couldn't comprehend any of it. it you couldn't like, keep up. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I would need to be drunk and high on five different things to even understand a little bit of this. No, I agree. I think I, I listened to the first hour of it. I just had it kind of played in the background, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I listened to like 10 minutes of it before I gave up. <laughs> I could see Irvin just sitting there and then just writing something down and then turn around and look at his speaker and just be like, what, what am I listening to right now? <laughs> well, I had a play like, while I was playing FIFA or whatever, so, mm-hmm. you know, kind of how – I like to play with FIFA, but they'd start talking about random ass shit. And I was like, what the hell did they... Like, the only t- thing I took away from that hour that I listened to right now is that centipedes are wild. Like, cent- I saw... They were talking about the centipede, how centipedes can kill mice, and then they showed a video of a centipede <laughs> eating, a mi- eating a mouse. And I didn't even know that was possible. No, that, that is definitely interesting. But no, I still need to listen to the one that they're, well, with the Bob Lazar guy, um, whatever that guy, I can't remember what his name is. I mean, I listened to the original Bob Lazar one, but the more recent one you're talking about. Yeah, right? the most, it came out like two weeks ago. Yeah. And I highly well, recommend David it. David Cobell is the guy's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he had, the other guy was a reporter from Las Vegas. Um, yeah. 
that's been working on like UFO stuff and alien stuff for the last 30 some years or whatever. But um, yeah, the stuff they, they talked about there on there was pretty wild. It's even more like Bob Lazar stuff, but then also just touching on like, you know, the Pentagon really saying they had um, uh, aircrafts that were that could not be made on Earth. You know, they came out and confirmed that they they've they have UFOs. Well, not have UFOs, but like have captured UFOs, right? Like different um mm-hmm. for from different missions or whatever. But see, I'm such a skeptic now that I've always been like, Yeah, UFOs are real. They have them. <laughs> But now, now they're, they're like, saying yeah, it. Now they're like, yeah, we have them. Like, they're just trying to distract us from all the other shit. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have anything. <laughs> like, what, uh, what they were saying on there is, like, with all the stuff that's going on, they're able to just kind of throw that out there without it catching too much traction. Because yeah. yeah. when they released the first footage or whatever, the UFOs, it got talked about for, like, five hours, and then it was done and out of – yeah, but the thing is with that one is that one had already that was already like mainstream. Like I had already seen that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they confirmed it, right? Like they, they, they came it, out right? and said, "Yep." I just think if that was like they released that video for the first time and were like, "We are unable to identify what is in this video," then everyone might have been like, "Oh shit!" But I feel like that one has gotten you know gotten talked about before. Yeah, I don't know. It does. It's either either they're trying to use the stuff to distract people or they're trying to slip it in and uh, let it fly under the radar. Probably both. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right. Well, that's all I got. I don't know if you guys have anything else that you pressing matters that you guys wanted to talk about. Not really. Uh, just kind of. Talking corona just, yeah. just drains me. <laughs> it does. Because it just cripples everything. Yep. It's really not much happening. Yeah. All right. Well, then we'll call it there. Uh, thank you, everyone, for staying this this long and listening to our us kind of rant about the future of sports and our future of our education, basically. And then maybe we'll talk about actual that UFO uh, Rogan podcast next week if you all get a chance yeah. to watch it. I know Isaac watched it and we kind of talked about it. Um, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, go ahead and hit that subscribe button on there and you know to keep up to date with all our new episodes um if you're watching on youtube you know subscribe onto the youtube channel leave us a like leave us a comment let us know what you kind of take away from the podcast or any stuff that you want us to talk about but for the most uh updates you want to go over to our instagram page or facebook page at myincation19 it's where we post a lot of our or random things that we have throughout the week. So, you know, highly encourage you guys to check that out. And yeah, that's all I got. Any parting words for the people you guys have? I'm good. All right. Have an awesome week and we'll catch you guys again next week. Hopefully Isaac is back and, you know, full crew is back. Um, it's, it was unfortunate that Reed was unable to, to jump yeah. on. Yeah, he us. texted me back, said he's having to mow and do some yard stuff. So. Uh, big sad. Maybe, maybe next time we might try to get it on. But uh, yeah, have a wonderful weekend. See you guys later.